How to re-import an asset with C++ in Unreal? Because if you already have imported an asset before, you don't have to go through the whole import process again and set all the import settings that you want because you can simply click on the re-import button and that should re-import the asset using the same setting that you've set before, which makes the re-import feature pretty useful. The only thing you might want to modify is the source path of the file you want to use to re-import the asset, but even that, you don't even have to do it. So let's get to it. But before we start, today's video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 20 of the series, so I strongly recommend to go see that one, but if you don't want to, here is the code. So here we are in a completely empty header file except the function we are going to write today. So the re-import asset function, it's a going to be a simple function, a super simple function, is going to take the asset path of the asset we want to re-import as input and also the possibility to override the source path to use to re-import that asset. But that parameter is going to be optional. You don't have to change the source path that you want to use to re-import the asset. If that variable is empty, you're just going to reuse the same source file that was used the last time you imported your asset. So if you want to modify it, you just have to feed it a new path, a new source file or somewhere on your computer that you want to use to re-import your asset, but otherwise you can just leave it empty and it's just going to re-import the asset as is without changing anything. Perfect. So that's it for the other file. Now it's time to jump in the CPP and as usual, we're going to start with the includes and today we're going to start with the include of the video 20 of the series. That include is going to help us override the path of the source file you want to use for the re-import right before re-importing the asset. You can technically do it without using the code we wrote in the video 20 of the series, but as I said in that video, it's a little bit clunky and I recommend meant to use my function instead. But anyway, the code of the previous video right here, and then we have the editor reimport handler to do the reimport process, obviously. So the editor reimport handler is inside the module Unreal ED, which should be in the build.cs file because I already used it before. So here it is, Unreal ED module. Make sure that you have it in the build.cs file, otherwise it's not going to compile. Perfect. In my case, it's good. So I go back in the CPP and now I can focus on the function. And as usual, the same thing we do when we want to modify an asset, we have to first load the asset because because right now we only have the asset path of the asset we want to modify. We don't have the actual asset, so let's just load it right here. So I have my existing asset using a static load object. I'm going to load the asset at that path location in my content folder. That's going to give me the asset we want to modify. And since we want to modify that asset, I'm just going to make sure that the asset is actually valid before modifying it. So here, if it's null, it means that the asset doesn't exist. So I won't be able to re-import that asset because the asset doesn't exist. That's a re-import action we're doing right now. The asset has to already be imported in the project for it to work. You cannot re-import an asset that doesn't exist. So here I'm just making sure that the asset is valid and if it's not, well, I'm just returning. I cannot re-import that asset because it's not there. But if the asset is valid, now we can re-import it. But before doing that, I'm just going to check if I want to modify the source path I want to use to re-import that asset. So if the source path override is not equal to empty, it's not an empty string. It means that you provided a new path that you want to use to re-import that asset. In that case, I'm simply going to use the code that I wrote in the video 20 of the series. So the set asset import path right here, providing it the asset path of the asset we want to modify and the new source Source path we want to use for that asset and that code is simply going to override the path that was already there in the asset that was saved in the asset is going to override it using the new source path override we receive as input so good that's going to override the path uh, and then i'm just going to make sure that it worked if if i wanted to modify the source path to use for that asset and it didn't work well i'm just going to return right away because there was probably something somewhere in the process that didn't work so in that case i'm just going to uh, return stop trying to re-import my asset and that information message should give more information about what went wrong during the process. So good. If I was able to modify the source path, actually, if I wanted to modify the source path and I was able to modify it, then I should be able to re-import my asset. So then I'm just going to ask the re-import manager to re-import my asset. The asset we want to use is obviously the existing asset and that's it. The re-import manager should re-import that asset. In this function, actually, you should be able to also provide the source path of the file you want to use for that re-import because it's possible to override that source path directly inside that function. But as I said in the previous video, it's a little bit clunky and I recommend to modify the source path before trying to re-import the asset just because it's not always consistent and doesn't always give the right results. So just to avoid any weird surprises, let's just modify the source path first and then call the re-import function. Otherwise, if you don't want to be safe, you can directly provide the source path override directly inside the re-import function and that should work also. You can do that. It's a feature in Unreal. I just find it a little bit clunky. So anyway, here I'm simply re-importing my asset using the re-import manager and if it worked, well, it means that we're done we're done with the function because it was a success. I was able to re-import my asset and there it is. I'm done. I can return. But in the case that it didn't work, I'm just going to quickly use the code we wrote in the video 20 once again to get the asset import path that is currently saved in the asset. So that's my asset right here. I'm just going to retrieve the path of the source file that the re-import manager used to re-import that asset. So the re-import manager used the import path to re-import the asset and that path right here. I'm just going to use it to give more information.
information to the user. So that was not a success. I was not able to re-import my asset properly. And that's probably because the source path is not valid. So that's why right here, I'm just going to write the path to the user. So the user knows, okay, that's the path that was used for the re-import. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that it is valid before trying to re-import it again. So maybe the file was moved on your computer. Maybe the file was deleted, renamed or anything. Anything could have happened. So here I'm just going to ask the user, okay, are you sure that the path is valid? Because it's possible that it's not. And if it's not valid, well, the re-import uh, will actually fail. So here is just to give more information to the user. But the main part of the function is the re-import line right here. So good, I guess we're done. Now it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. So here in Unreal, I have an asset that I'm going to try to re-import. Uh, right now it's a statistic mesh, but you can do that with any type of asset, obviously. So here I have my chicken that I'm going to try to re-import. And we're going to do that using a same user interface as usual. So this is the path of the asset I want to re-import. So in this case, it's my chicken, my 21 chicken right here. And that's the path of the asset override that I want to use to replace the path of the source file that was used to re-import my chicken before. We're going to try with this variable completely empty, with this field right here completely empty, and with something else in the field. So my warrior, for example. So it's going to replace the source file that we're going to use to re-import my chicken. So good. Then when we click on the re-import button, it should call the function we wrote today. So the re-import asset function right here. I'm feeding it the path of the asset I want to re-import, so my chicken, and the path override, so the path of the source file I want to use to re-import my chicken. Perfect. So good. Let's try it to see if it works. I'm going to open my chicken. So we have a little bit of a visual and we're also going to open the editor utility widget. I have my widget right here. I'm going to start by deleting this variable right here just to make sure that it is empty and it's reusing the same source path that it was used the first time I imported the chicken in the project. So if I click on re-import right here, it should re-import the chicken. It doesn't give that much feedback because it's actually the same source file. So it doesn't change really the mesh. Oh, it disappeared, but whatever. It's right here. So, but you can see that it changed a few things in the user interface. It didn't change any settings, but it rebuilt it with the new FBX file that I want to use for the re-import and it's actually the same FBX file. So nothing changed really. But if we want to replace the source file, for example, I'm going to use my warrior FBX instead of my chicken FBX. And this time, if I click on re-import, it should, okay, do something first of all, and then it should replace my chicken by a warrior because now it's using the FBX file of my warrior instead of the FBX file of my chicken. And you can see here on the right in the source file, you can see that the file path also changed right here. Now it's really using the warrior FBX file path instead of my chicken. And that also means that if I re-import using the button that is in Unreal by default, it's also going to do the same thing. It's going to re-import my chicken using the same FBX file that I used right here the last time I re-imported my mesh because I changed the source. And that's why it works. And the same thing, if I delete my path right here one more time and I click on re-import, it's going to do the same exact behavior because now it's using the warrior FBX to re-import my chicken. Perfect. So I guess that's going to be it for today's video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.